Hello, my name is Gonzalo Abad and in this tutorial we are going to see asymmetrical voltage dips analysis in a wind turbine based on WFET induction generator. Most of the information and theories related to this topic can be found on those two books. WFET induction machine modeling and control for wind energy generation at the English and Chinese version and at this other, other book. Power Electronics for Renewable Energy Systems, Transportation and Industrial Applications. More specifically, specifically in this chapter, in this book, in chapter 10, and in these books, more specifically, uh, the issue that we are going to treat is in chapter 7. Okay, so as I mentioned, if we go to chapter 7, and chapter 10 of those two books. So here they are. So if we go to chapter 10, page 21, here we have what we are going to simulate. We are going to suppose that there is a voltage dip at the grid in which the voltages that the w induction generator are going to see through the stator and through the grid state converter have been deteriorated like here, asymmetrically. There, are, there is one voltage, for instance, voltage A, which is uh, normal, which has not been altered, but voltage B and C have been decreased and phase shifted. So, in order to tackle with this asymmetry to this voltage D, which is uh, unbalanced, which is as asymmetric, we can use this control strategy, which is represented in this, in this chapter 10 of this book. Since we are going to need to deal with positive and negative sequence uh, of voltages and currents with the WC induction generator, we should include negative sequence current loops in order to be able to properly control the generator. In chapter 7 probably of this book, more specifically, if we go to page 45, In this chapter 7, I was saying that this topic is much more deeply studied. Here you can find uh, a lot of uh, uh, much more theory related to this topic. However, in this case, we are going to follow just the control block uh, strategy represented in chapter 10. So we are going to implement this control strategy represented by, by this control block diagram. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is just open the MATLAB and open our program, which is going to be a continuation of the video tutorial, if I know wrong, 5, that we developed in video tutorial 5. Okay, we open the program. This is the program. And first of all, what we are going to do is just represent the voltage dip, the asymmetrical voltage dip that, the, that we want to emulate or to simulate in our system. So let's go to the grid model, which is this block. And we will just left a positive sequence as in here, then we will not use this feature, but we will use uh, fundamental and or harmonic generation. So for instance, we will use first order and we with an amplitude of 0 0.3 and 180 degrees phase shifted. 
what means that what we are going to subtract to this positive, to this fundamental voltage, 0 0.3 of amplitude in per unit, because we are with this phase delay. We will do it this at second 3, and then the voltage variation, the asymmetry of the voltage, will be finished at 3.9. And in order to create the asymmetry, we are going to use this other possibility. So the fundamental, the order one for the harmonic. The amplitude that we are going to use is going to be 0 0.2, for instance. And the phase shift, just 0. And we will use a negative sequence of voltage. So here we have the fundamental the positive sequence. Here we subtract 0 0.3 of the fundamental in positive sequence and then we add 0 0.2 of amplitude at negative sequence. So this is not very high uh, voltage dip, asymmetrical voltage dip. This is not very severe, this is not very strong and this is what we are going to, to implement. So, OK, we can save. OK, so let's start now implementing the control strategy, sorry, represented in chapter 10. So we are going to add these current loops for control of the negative sequence due to the asymmetry or to the negative sequence that we can find at the grid voltage. Okay, so let's go to the program. This is the rotor side converter control that comes through here, rotor side. Okay, so we will need some space. Let's move these elements down. Then we need probably also a space through this way. Yes, because we are going to add here the control of the negative sequence that we could put it just here. Okay, so here we will not add the negative sequence control loops. So for that purpose we need these two elements that we can copy them from here just carefully. Okay, we just don't need this at this moment. And this. Okay, let's move this to there. And then we will need something equivalent and something equivalent to here. And this is going to be what we are adding through the negative sequence. Obviously, both control loops will need different angle thetas. This one is this one for the negative sequence, and this one is for the positive sequence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, for instance, we can copy then control copy. In this case, there are several possibilities for the current or the current references for the negative sequence. But in this case, we are going to let them at zero. The reference is going to be zero. If we go to chapter seven of this book, here in pages uh, 46 and so on, there are several possibilities explained in this case. But in, 
this tutorial what we are going to use is this one in here balance rotor currents therefore we are going to do d component and q component of the negative sequence equal to zero this is what we are doing through these two references uh, set to zero why basically because it's the most easiest case okay mm -hmm. okay so once we have this this is going to be positive we need to change the names carefully this is going to be the positive and reference and this is going to be also the positive this becomes now positive well the negative sequence is going to be here we are going to have problems space problems but anyway just be patient okay so this is going to be negative uh, sorry positive negative and in this case sorry i did it i did it wrong eq this should be there positive positive yes and in this case the negative okay let's remove these wires in order to do some more space and this is going to be e iq negative reference mm -hmm. okay let's save let's go again to chapter 10 here we can see the, for the angle transformation for the positive and negative sequences we are going to use different angle this for positive sequence and this for negative se sequence this is going to be useful because the sequence decomposition is going to be easier more specifically the filter let's go here if we use this angle for positive for negative and this angle for positive the filter that we are going to set here in order to eliminate the, the coupling oscillations between sequences this filter is going to be simpler because we can tune it at in this case 100 hertz double of the frequency of the state okay so let's do this for instance here this is the angle calculation so we need two times theta let's use this and this this is going to be double the angle and then we need let me check again minus theta theta is this therefore we need to take from here and to here this is going to be 2 times theta s minus theta r let me check 2 times theta s minus theta r theta s 2 times oh sorry it's in the other way minus plus 2 times theta s minus theta r okay we can save it is very recommendable that the theta s angle this one in here should be now uh, calculated by means of a phase lock uh, lock loop by a PLL 
because here, as we need to deal with positive and sequence, uh, positive and negative sequences, this angle calculation is not this very simple angle calculation is not useful anymore. Therefore, we will need to use a PLL as represented and explained in this book. The PLL that we can use should be uh, synchronized with the positive sequence of this grid voltage when the asymmetrical dips occur. We can just use very simple uh, PLL given by uh, SimScape library, by Sim Power System library. So we need to open the li library, the specialized technology library. If we go to this block, control and measurements, here we can see PLLs, and the one that we can use is a three phase PLL. So we don't need these blocks anymore, and we will replace them by this PLL already made. And the angle theta is going to be just this one. Okay. There, it is very useful if we go to the help of this PLL. You can see all the information related to this PLL. It is very useful because there is a variable frequency mean value calculation there, which is able to fix or to synchronize with a positive sequence. Okay, we can change, we can left all the default parameters because it will work. The only thing that we need to set is the sample time to our switching frequency. Okay, and here as we are working with cosinus and sinus, we are going to subtract just P, sorry, P over 2, again, sorry, plus. It is a matter of initialization or initial conditions. So if I'm not wrong, in this way, the synchronization will be okay. So we can save. So we have already made this part and let's continue with the control strategy. Okay, so this is the angle now, theta r. Let's move, let's move down only this part. There it is. So this is the angle theta. And we just need to do basically the same for the negative sequence. And in this case, the angle theta is going to be, let's do it bigger, this second angle for the negative sequence. We need to multiply by minus one in order to do this part negative and this part, oh sorry, positive and this part negative. And then now we need to use the filter. This is what we are going to implement now. Sorry, let's put it there. This is the angle theta. Maybe we can do it smaller like this. This is the positive and this is the negative. So this is going to become positive that will go to these loops. So let's put this sub index P from positive and the same for the Q component. Let me do it. Yes, thank you. Okay. So now we need to filter. We need to use the filter. 
we are going to have here, thanks to this uh, angle transformation, we are going to have here DC components and oscillations of 100 Hz, double of the uh, grid frequency. So in this case, we can use here just very simple notch filters that we can take from the Simulink library again. If we go to the same blocks, here we have some filters, very useful filters. We can use a second order filter and here we can choose band stop. Our band stop is going to be at 100 Hz. We don't want to initialize. And here, for instance, let's put a damping radio of 0 0.1. Let's. And the switching from the sample frequency is going to be, as always, like this. OK. This is very useful to plot the filter response. Not work. Let's do it again. Plot filter response. Hmm, sorry, it's not working because probably this sample time is not uh, defined yet. So let's open the initialization program. Let's run it. Okay, already run it. And now it should be, it should work. Yes, here we have. So here it is, the bold, bold diagram, as we can see here, see here the, botch, the, bold, the notch filter at the frequency that we have tuned, 100 Hz, and here we have the step response. Maybe it's too oscillatory, so we can make this damping ratio Sorry, a little bit smaller. Let's do again the plot filter response. Yes, this is something like 8%. And the bold diagram is rejecting clearly here at 100 Hz frequencies. Okay, so let's let the filter there, control group, and we need two of those filters, one for the D component and the other one, sorry, for the Q component. So let's copy there. Sorry, with the names. So these are the filters. Here we have the filtering. So we can place it there. And this is the positive sequence without the 100 Hz oscillation. Filter. And let's do the same with the negative sequence. And therefore we have, or we need, the go to blocks, blocks as in here. And this will be not the positive, but the negative. And this will be Q component of the negative sequence. Okay, I think that everything is correct. Okay, so now we need some front two blocks. Let's take them from here, very simply. 
and this is going to be the positive one this is going to be the positive one correct and this will be the negative one or sorry the positive one in q component correct everything is going well positive d and q and here the same idea but d component in negative okay and d component sorry q component in negative is there so everything is correct let's save so if i'm not wrong yes there it is there it is angle calculation yep. oh, sorry angle calculation okay okay <clears throat> so let's go now with the cancellation of the coupling terms and let's go first with the positive sequence this is not going to be obviously like this but it will be the positive and this will be as well positive but q component since we are going to work with negative sequences at the increased voltage it is better if we cancel if we don't use the flux related term only we will cancel terms related with u3 and u4 with the current coupling and this is going to be positive positive and positive yes while here so here we don't really need this term but let's left there it doesn't really matter here again this is going to be negative negative okay and this is going to be negative as well and also this is going to be the voltage reference for the negative okay and this is going to be voltage reference for the negative in the negative sequence the coupling terms the coupling is just in the other way around so therefore these signs must be put in the other way around and this term is not going to be cancelled okay we know we don't really need this part so let's remove it so those are the only fourth variables that we need D Q negative. Okay. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the angle theta for the positive sequence comes to there, and the angle theta for the negative sequence comes through there we can put it from here okay like this mm -hmm. so everything should it should be there if I know wrong let me check in the block diagram but I think that we have finished we have implemented this part with the sequence Descomposition with a PLL 
and in here we are going to use just zero reference and for the D components we are going to let them as they were the D component, oh, sorry, the Q component is responsible of the torque control and the D component is going to be directly controlled to the reference that we want okay, so it seems that everything is there let's do a little bit of space but anyway, it's not so important For the PA regulators of the negative sequence, in this case, we should or we could use just the same as for the positive sequence. Sorry. So let's open the initialization program. What we are really going to do is, as we did in video tutorial 6, I think, we are going to do uh, slower the dynamic of the current loads. Something like in radians per second to this value. And in this case, we are using the same gains or the same proportional and integral gains for positive and negative sequences. Okay, so it seems everything is all right. So let's go to the monitoring block and let's go to the corresponding rotor side converter monitoring block. So we are going to use, we are going to need to visualize positive for Q component and negative, sorry, for positive here, okay, and we are going to put the negative sequence control loops in the same scope. So we need to copy these two blocks from here to here, for instance. Yes, let's, ah, we don't need this, sorry. And this is going to be the negative sequence. So Q components, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sorry, yes, reference, and reference negative. So Q components are going to be visualized both in this scope. For D component as well of the voltage references, we will do the same. Okay, so this is going to be positive. Okay. And this is going to be the negative, which is there. Okay, so everything is connected. And we can do just the same idea for the negative. So let's copy from here to there. We need another multiplexer. connect and this is going to be negative okay and this is going to be negative perfect Sorry. perfect now and this is going to be positive so let's add this sub index and this is going to be positive as well Positive, negative, positive, decomponent, and negative. It seems that everything is correct. Another multiplexer for the reference of the voltages. Okay. 
okay this is going to be positive sorry there okay positive and this is going to be negative we save and everything should be there for checking so now in these two and these two scopes these two win these four windows we are going to see all together positive and negative sequences yes okay once we have that as I did before, I have implemented there the voltage dip. I have to say that I have chosen a not very severe, not very strong asymmetrical voltage fault. And therefore, what will happen is that we are going, the system is not going to lose control. Therefore, we are not going to need the activation of the crowbar protection therefore we need to eliminate this activation that should be uh, automatically but if you remember in video tutorial 5 we didn't do it automatically we just use some time steps in to control them so we are going to disactivate them for instance saying that they will work at second 30 but we won't simulate second 30. this is one part which we need to eliminate the element neither here here it is what else obviously we won't reach up to second 30 let me check here we are performing the voltage dip or the voltage fault up to 3.9 okay so let's simulate for instance 20 milliseconds 200 milliseconds more where else here also we don't need this initial value one always if with the initial value so we don't do this we don't do nothing and the same for this one 30 and 40 and I think that all the manipulations are now okay yes and we are doing it because the voltage fault that we have chosen is in such a way that the system will not need will not lose control therefore we will we will not need to use the crowbar activation the crowbar protection mm, okay 3.9 and three so here for instance yes at second 3.15 and the voltage dips the voltage fault occurs at three at second three we are going to for instance demand 20 per 25 percent of the rated current but in this case through the rotor through this rubber okay so I think that the system is ready to simulate uh, at this moment we won't do anything with the grid side converter it's this topic this matter is difficult enough just to focus only on the rotor side converter but something very similar we should do at the grid side converter because the asymmetry the unbalance voltage fault is going to be also uh, seen by the grid side converter not only through the stator but also by the 
grid side converter. But we will focus only on the rotor side converter and therefore its control. So let's simulate it with the accelerator. Therefore, we will need some time. Mm, we have a problem. Okay, at the PLL. Let's have a look at the derivative, yes. The derivative is too small for the sample period that we are using. We are using the default parameters and it will work. And this is the sample time. Let's use, for instance, this value and I guess that it will work. Let's simulate again. Hmm. One more error. Cancellation of the coupling terms. Oh, sorry. Here we are using the speed U5 and I have removed it. Sorry, I shouldn't remove it. How should I do? Okay, so I will need this, all this. Okay. I will need all this again. Sorry. Yes. So here we need four more, two more inputs. Now connected. On order, yes. We need omega r because it's this element, this cancellation of the coupling terms. Therefore, we we really need it, and we need omega that we could take, for instance, from here. Yes. Before we continue, there is something, something else missing. Here, there is obviously one error there. It should be like that. Okay, so let's save. Okay. But before, before we continue, <coughs> We are going to do one last thing. We are going to perform one voltage dip, which is longer in time, up to 4.2. Therefore, we will need to simulate, for instance, up to 4.3. Things. Let's do the voltage duration a little bit bigger. Okay. So let's simulate, see what happens with the accelerator. Mm. It seems it is working. Okay. There we have. As always, the grid side converter at the DC boost voltage is not capable, capable of controlling this huge over voltage due to the rotor power that comes through the rotor obviously through here and there is a big over voltage but now is being able to control it the speed is moving is increasing wait now things are getting better and the current loops of both uh, converters seems to be working okay yes here we have the positive sequence of the Q component of the current and here we have the negative sequence to zero 
as we have said. This is the responsible of the torque, so we are controlling the torque and we are reaching the maximum power point tracking due to the wind speed of this value, 8.5. Now the voltage dip is going to happen here. At second three, yes. At second three. The asymmetry and the grid imbalance happens. And therefore we have a big uh, perturbation at the stator that is noticed by the grid side converter and by the rotor side converter. There are some milliseconds, some hundreds or milliseconds of the, of the deep duration and the grid uh, and the current loops are as, uh, becoming more stable. Here there is the almost 500 amps of the positive current through the rotor that we have programmed and here we have the negative sequence of the D current and the negative sequence of the Q current that we are performing. Here is the torque reference and here we have the actual torque. In mean value is less because we have less voltage because we are at the voltage dip and also we have oscillations because of the imbalance. The voltage dip will occur until 2.2, if I'm not wrong. Sorry. Yes, and now the voltage recovery occurs, which is another perturbation, and the system is being able to control. Okay, so at second 4.3 the, the simulation has finished. Let's see what, ha what has happened. As always we are going to see from second 3 more or less. There it is. Let's do some zooms at the rotor side control. Here is the speed variation that we have, mainly because we don't have control, appropriate or full control of the torque because we are at less flux. We are at not total voltage of the grid, therefore we see how the stator flux has gone down during the voltage dip. Therefore, we cannot achieve total control. And also, we have oscillations. Those oscillations at the torque are mainly because we have the imbalance situation and we have made zero the negative sequence of the rotor currents. This is the situation. Here there are some perturbations, some more oscillation during the transient, but at the end we have quite acceptable uh, performance. Then here we have the stator currents. This is what we have demanded through the D component of positive sequence and this is translated in this stator current at the stator side. Here we have the voltages, references, there they are, and here we have the rotor current, there it is. Here at the end, at second 4.2, if I'm not wrong, here we have the voltage recovery that again is a uh, perturbation for the system. 
but still the system is able to operate. At the beginning of the voltage dip, we have the perturbation, we have uh, oscillation superposed to the normal situation, which are which is mainly to the natural flux. That after simulation, we see how it is in some way damped. And here we have the currents that we achieve at the rotor and at the stator. Here we have balanced rotor currents, therefore we achieve unbalanced stator currents and therefore we achieve uh, oscillations at the torque. We meet with mean value, as I said before, less than what the MPPT control, the speed control and direct control is demanding us. And this is due to this zero control of the negative sequences. Then at the grid side converter, we didn't do nothing to deal with this voltage dip, which is asymmetric, but it is able to cope with the DC boost voltage perturbation and it is able to control to zero the D and, uh, sorry the Q component of the current during the voltage dip. In order to be more efficient for this grid side converter control, obviously we should add at this grid side converter the same negative sequence control loops or the same philosophy at this grid side converter but we didn't do it so that's all i think there is no torque control so the speed variation that we have at this part at this point is this one in control uh, rotational speed Okay, so that was all. I know that asymmetrical voltage faults for this double fifth induction generation generator is quite a complex matter, quite a complex topics. But uh, but I think that it is enough uh, for for this uh, for to have a rough idea. So thank you for uh, your att attention, and I hope it was interesting this tutorial for you. Thank you.